Hi, welcome to Data Engineering and today we are going to discuss about big data project deployments. So recently I got questions from my viewers like how we will deploy the project in production. So how I will move my code to production. So uh, one guy asked me this in interview. They have asked me this question. So I have explained my project. I have explained all the interview questions. But finally, when they ask me like how you will deploy it. So he was very new to this tech stack, but he has good experience. But still, when it comes to deployment, he was not aware that much to answer the question. So now I'm going to explain you how to deploy a big data project. That means you have a code, a Spark program or a MapReduce program or a Hive query file. So how you will uh, uh, move this to different environments and finally to the production machine. Okay, so now uh, there is like uh, four environments you will be having in general. So the very first thing when I say environment is your personal laptop. Okay, and then the actual real clusters you will be having three real clusters. One is called dev cluster and then test cluster something called some sometimes called as UAT user acceptance test cluster and then finally you will be having the prod environment production cluster so all these three are like a cluster it's group of nodes and all these are Hadoop clusters only but you will be having three environments the very first thing let, let, let me go with only spark code or HQL whatever you can replace my spark code with HQL whatever uh, like I will go with spark code so uh, I'm, I'm going to develop a spark code uh, if it is a Python Spark, then it, it is going to be a py file if it is a scala or java then it is going to be the jar file so let me go with the jar file okay but you can replace this with pick script or hive whatever it is it's going to be the common uh, story actually so in the laptop i have my ide like intellij or eclipse you develop your spark program Imagine I'm writing a spark program to read uh, data from uh, tables from mysql Okay, so I have two tables T1 and T2. I want to join this in my spark program and then I have to get the output and this output uh, will get stored in a, another, another table or maybe in hive the output is going to get stored in hive okay this is the case so in my local environment uh, in my laptop what i'm doing is i have mysql in my machine so I'm, i've just created a table and then i did a join and then finally i i'm doing a show because in my local machine i don't have hive but it's possible you can install but but that's fine anyway you can you can test that in dev environment so you can skip that in your laptop so in laptop i'm just giving show and i'm, I'm just checking my output so are your or even if your mysql is not there in your local office laptop machine what you can do you can create a test file okay or we have some test framework in which you can create tables uh, mock tables uh, as a file and then you can do a join and you can test all those stuff so in your local laptop whichever method is possible for you to populate the input file you try to do in that way and test it in your local laptop first so once your code is ready and it is working fine in your local laptop then build the code as a jar file and then you have to move it to your development cluster so this is your dev cluster so in the dev cluster you will be having some folder structure in which you have to place the jar and you have to trigger the spark submit command so if there is no table structure sorry folder structure try to create one so imagine i'm working for a company called abc is it insurance okay so for this client i'm going to run this particular uh, module so this module is called user module imagine in that way the code what i have written is for user the module name is user so here i will be creating a folder in dev i am going to create a folder as abc is it insurance and again within that folder i will create and one more folder as user and within that user i am going to place my spark jar file now i am going to prepare a spark submit command with all the memory properties and dependent files whatever etc i will i will create one spark submit command and i will trigger the jar file now you will get a question like in dev environment how will i get the input files so in dev test and production you will be having your source system ready already so mysql is the source right so in dev environment you, you will be having mysql uh, installed and the uh, input tables will be also available so there is two way in which you will get the data in the lower environment when we say lower environment is dev and test is called lower environment when we say upper environment it is production so the jar the the, the terminology is the jargons will be different from company to company so don't get confused so i will use the word dev uh, test and production that way i will use so in dev and uat there will be a team okay in which they will populate the data for us and uh, very important in the dev and test environment the source data is not the real data it's not the production source data that is very important so i need a source my sql is the source if 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 my tables are there in my sql then only i can test my spark code so in dev and uat you will not see the real data the real actual business data you will not see so there will be a team which will populate the data for you uh, for the testing purpose in the dev and uat if there is no such team 
you can populate the data you can create a table and you can insert some records to it but mostly you will be having a team so that team will have some name just identify it so or you can use some names as well so that team will populate the data for you or you can inform to them uh, i need a data for this table so they will just generate a, a data generator tool they used to have and they will generate the data for the particular uh, tables now imagine in De dev and test the input data is ready for me in mysql now this spark submit when i trigger in dev cluster it is running fine or sometimes you will be having some error with the performance or some syntax issue which in, lo in your laptop it was not there but when you move to dev it is there because it's environmental change right so that is the reason why we have to test it by environment environment by environment okay so in dev cluster you have to check the performance as well that is also matters okay now uh, once it is done with the dev cluster okay you have to move it to uat so uat means user acceptance testing so once you have done with the dev environment if if everything runs fine you can check with your lead or someone and if they say okay your code is good move to uat then you will get an approval so you can move this to uat so in uat the user will so same uh, you will be having a folder again like abc is at insurance and within that you will be having a user folder and within that you will be placing the jar file and generate the spark submit and run the code once the output is generated, you ask the user to validate the output. So if user says, okay, I'm, uh, I'm good with the data. So now you are eligible to move this to the production, but I will halt here. So before getting into the production part, I'm I want to explain you one more important thing that is scheduler. So scheduling is a separate team, which will help you to schedule your jobs. Imagine this particular jar file has to run for every one hour. So I cannot manually come back every one hour once and I cannot trigger the jar file, right? So imagine in dev, UAT and production, the jar file, what you are placing needs to be get executed for every one hour once. So that means I cannot manually do that. So I will be having some scheduling team to which uh, to, uh, there will be a team to whom I have to say, like, this is my jar file. Please trigger this jar file every one hour once with the spark submit command. So this is what I have to inform them. But how you will do that, right? So scheduler means you will be having a lot of schedulers like uh, you have schedulers like control M, autosys, active batch, active batch and airflow so there are so many schedulers and and it's not important that you need to aware of all the schedulers when you go for an interview or to a new project or new new company so the schedulers is always like kind of uh, uh, not mandatory skill set for the data engineers to uh, uh, to learn these things it's not required but if you learn it that's fine but for for schedulers there will be a separate team for 100 percent sure in any companies you go so this scheduler team for example if you pick autosys the autosys will ask you for few details so where where uh, from which folder from which script for the which jar file should be get invoked and all those information the autosys will ask you uh, through some form or some web form they will ask all this information and and they will ask also like how many hours once this has to be get triggered and uh, like if some issue comes to whom we have to contact so they will ask all this information you fill the, all this information and give it back to the scheduling team and they will start the scheduler so very important thing is in in in, in your projects right in dev or uat or production uh, you should not manually prepare the spark submit you have to write one script okay so imagine i am going to write a start uh, code start code dot py or it could be in shell script anything is fine so this shell script is what this python or shell script is what uh, will generate the spark submit and that is how you have to prepare one script okay so this script will uh, prepare the spark submit imagine you have 100 jars spark jars and you cannot manually uh, generate a spark submit for all these 100 jars or if if a new jar adds in future you can't do it right so you have to write one shell script or a python script which will take care of generating the spark submit or if it is a hql file it it has to take care of generating that hi hyphen f command to run your hql file okay so just write just create one base script and this script is what you have to hand over to the the scheduler team so to the scheduler team tell them please trigger the script for every one hour once that's it autosys team will not come to know what is inside and what what spark submit or whatever it is they will never come to know just give them this script and script whenever one hour once whenever the autosys is triggering the script internally the script will execute and generate the spark submit and the, and it will run the code 
that is how it has to be so now uh, this script you have to again place it in your cluster somewhere create a script folder and place it in all these environment and inform the scheduler team they will take care of it and as i told you i'm, I'm repeating it again you don't want to worry about uh, which scheduler you are using and what about the questions that i will get from scheduler in interview you will be getting only one question what scheduler you have used that's it and in what frequency you will trigger the job that's it so don't worry about the scheduler part fine so now when you go for production so user said everything is good the code is good the performance is good the output is also expected you can move the jar file to production but you will be having some process to follow here you have to get lot of approvals to move this jar file so i'm explaining the process also the process depends to company to company but in general i'm telling you the process so uh, we call it as a change request so whenever you move something to production there will be a process called a change request team so this change request team used to monitor like what are all the scripts are coming to production and with that with that new script or new changes or new jar file what impact is gonna come for the code and the project and what is the business justification so this change request team used to ask all these questions from you and also they will ask the approval um, uh, mail or approval stuff from your client or from your managers uh, saying that the code is good and everything is good then the change request team will approve it and once they have approved it then you have to move the jar file to the production this is how it happens so the process like it depends actually so companies to company it will change but change request is a common process across the company but the process within the change request may differ so uh, this is again a new uh, other team to which you have to interact and you have to raise a cr we call it as a cr in short form so once the cr is approved your jar file will be placed again in the same directory structure like abc insurance and within that you have user folder and within that you have the jar file now again this script will be available in the production also inform that to the auto system and in production also the auto system will take and take care of triggering your code now uh, once your code has been triggered and it is running good for two days and finally in the third day you are getting some issue with the code then there will be a team called support team uh, they will monitor your jobs and if some issue comes the support team or the ops team we call it as an admin team or support team whomever it is they will inform to the data engineering team back means to you to you and your team they will inform that, that this is a code which got onboarded three days back and now it is causing an issue please check you will be getting an, an issue will be assigned to you so any jobs that runs in production when failure comes the issue will be assigned to the development team so they have to take care of it so once it is done again you have to okay so there is an issue occurred and you identified what is the bug and you are doing some code changes and again you have to push the code via dev test and then production with all this process you have to follow so whenever in the interview someone asks you how you deploy it you have to explain this in short okay so you will be having some uh, clusters like three clusters is always common but cluster configuration is an another topic i will take it in the next video like how many nodes in a cluster and what will be the ram size hard disk size number of cores for uat production it differs so i am not going to continue that here i will make it in the next video please stay touch with my channel and my playlist so that whenever you get that video you will come to know as i already told you some important videos which i have mentioned in the description box which is required for you to uh, watch uh, before watching this video or after watching this vi this video but that will be very helpful it's all about the job interview perspective okay so thanks for watching and if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel forward this to your friends and colleague and please do share my video in your linkedin profile thanks for watching